This conference will now be recorded. There we go. This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Marquee 360's third webcast in the Power Platform series. We have some great content for you today. We're going to show you Power BI, which is a robust analytics service that enables anyone in your organization to consume data effectively for easy decision making. All attendees are muted, so if you want to ask a question, please utilize the chat feature on the right-hand side. My name is Mike, and I'm a productivity specialist here at Marquee 360. I also have Neil Alcott, who is our solution specialist, and will be demonstrating. After the webinar, I'll be sending out a recording of the presentation and the slide deck, so no worries if you get pulled away. Marquee 360 is a Microsoft partner that helps companies with the digital transformation of business applications in as little time as possible. At Marquee 360, we aim to help businesses understand and navigate a digital transformation strategy to take advantage of disruption. We specialize in being close to your customers. Our services include SharePoint, Power Apps, Power BI, Microsoft Flow, and Microsoft Teams. This is a high-level view into Power BI, but the possibilities are endless. Our experts work with our clients via one-on-one -on -one workshops where we can take their processes, whiteboard the solution, and build it together. I will now hand off the webinar to Neil Alcott. Neil? I think we're having um, technical difficulties. Yeah, I can't yeah. hear Neil either. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he's on mute. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> you guys <laughs> yeah, we can hear you now. <laughs> so what I was saying was, um, again, we, we were going to be covering Power BI, as Mike said. Um, so Power BI is a data analytics service um, from the Microsoft uh, cloud solution, so Microsoft 365, or, or formerly known as Office 365. And what we're going to go over today is we're going to do an overview of Power BI, um, more as you know, describing the actual service, what its different components are. And then I'll get into an actual demo where I'll go through and show you how you can build different reports and dashboards, um, show you how you can share those with your you know, other people within your organization. Um, I'll also talk about uh, one of the nice things with Power BI is Microsoft has a lot of different connectors and content packs. And as you guys, if you've attended our other uh, webinars on Power Apps and Flow, that's one of the things that Microsoft's been doing a really good job with with the Power, Power Platform is um, there's a lot of connectors to other systems, uh, whether they're Microsoft, you know, based applications or, or other third party uh, applications, which really allows you to pull in data pretty much from anywhere. Um, so you can really leverage those content packs, those connections to create dashboards that um, are pretty robust. You know, they, they really can pull in information pretty much from anywhere at this point. Um, so going through here, so first off, what is Power BI? So again, it is it is part of the Microsoft Cloud Services, um, which means it's you know an online service. Um, they do have an on-prem version of this, um, so you can install a Power BI uh, server that basically um, can run in your data center, but probably you know 95% of the customers we're working with, they're using the cloud service for that. Um, what's really nice with Power BI though is it's, and again, kind of coming from Flow and Power Apps as well, this is really meant as a service that, you know, your power users or, you know, maybe your end users can, can build reports and dashboards on their own. They don't necessarily have to have um, 
deep understanding of uh, SQL queries or, or any kind of developer background, any kind of report writer background. Obviously, that kind of stuff helps, but this is really meant to be BI for the masses, right? So pretty much anybody can, can leverage Power BI. Um, it, does, it does leverage some capabilities that were first introduced with Microsoft Excel. So if you've ever played around with Power Query, it uses the same exact engine as that. Um, as, along with Power Pivot as well. And again, with those visuals and the reports, um, it gives you a lot of information to you know, pull data in, export data out, um, do your analysis, do your visualizations. So the Power BI service, you can access it either through the waffle menu in the upper left-hand corner of um, Office 365, or if you go to the URL I have displayed here, app.powerbi.com, you can then go in, sign in under your Office 365 account. You can also create a trial account um, if you don't have access to it and you want to play around with it for 30 days. Um, when someone does have a Power BI license or, or a trial license, they will have the ability to create their own personal workspace. And that's basically an area for yourself where you can publish reports and dashboards. You can also be part of groups. So if you're in a group and a group workspace, that basically would be an area where you would share data sets, reports, dashboards with your coworkers. You know, so it could be either a group that's organizationally wide or for your particular you know, department or group. OK, and in the workspaces and some of this terminology I'm going to go over in a minute, that's, as I said, where you're going to find the reports, data sets, dashboards. We talked about Power Query and um, it does use a language called DAX, which helps with the data modeling. So if you do have data that you need to manipulate in a certain fashion to be able to, to either report on it or visualize it, you can use DAX to further um, model your data. All right. So when you go into Power BI workspaces, this is really the cloud area where people will work with this. Um, workspaces are similar to a SharePoint site. So if you're familiar with SharePoint, conceptually it's it's similar concept. Um, basically, the user will have to have access to that particular workspace. They, they have permissions that you can set for that. But once they get into the workspace itself on the um, side menu, which again, I'm gonna show you when I'm demoing it, you'll see how many dashboards do you have access to in that workspace, how many reports, and how many data sets. So the data sets, your actual query, you know, what data have you imported into the workspace. So we have the workspace, which we've been talking about. Dashboards are basically areas where you can pin individual reports onto it um, so that you have some simple visualizations, but then you have the ability to drill down and get more detailed information. Reports are um, really kind of the heart of this. This is where you're going to create a page with one or more visuals, you know, tables of information. Um, and as I mentioned, you then pin that to the dashboard so that people have easy access to it. And then the data set is the data that you've pulled in with your queries. Now, for the tools, there's actually several different ways that you can use Power BI. Um, today, I'm going to actually use the Power BI desktop tool. Um, the Power BI service, the first one we're listing here, is available via your browser. So you can access your workspaces, you can import your data sets, you can design reports and dashboards all in your web browser. Um, you can also grab content packs and load them through the web browser as well. Um, Power BI Desktop is a desktop application that gives you access to Power BI. So with that, you can, again, create your data sets and import your data using Power Query. You can model it using Power Pivot or DAX. And then you can design your reports. Once you're done, you can save that individual report and dashboard as a PBIX file on your local machine. And you can open it up, refresh the data, and look at the data, which, which is great for your own personal use. Um, if you want to share that with coworkers, then you would want to make sure that you're publishing it up to the Power BI service and into one of the workspaces that you have rights to. Now, the other option too is you can use Excel, right? So Excel does use um, Power Query and Power Pivot, which is the same exact engine in the background of Power BI. 
the one thing where you may want to use Power BI versus Excel in is, um, you know, some of your visualiz visualizations are going to be different, obviously, right? So with Excel, you're going to be limited to the Excel charts and, and objects that Excel has, whereas with Power BI, you'll have access to all their visuals. Um, when, when we talk about visuals as well, visuals can be um, created by third parties. So you can either get it from you know, another user, a particular visualization that maybe Power BI doesn't ship with, um, or you can download them from, uh, they have galleries where people share visualizations that they've built themselves, and then you can download them and use them in Power BI, um, either the browser or the desktop version. All right. and. As I get into the demo here, um, I have additional slides. I'm not going to go through them today. I'd rather demo the actual solution for you guys. Um, but when we share the presentation out later, it goes through some of those same steps. Anybody have a question? OK. So let me open Power BI Desktop. So this is Power BI Desktop. And just to go over the interface real quick, what we have here is the canvas where you would build out your particular report or view. In your report, you can have multiple pages. So down here, similar to Excel worksheets, you can have different pages. So you could have you know, 10 different pages to a particular report. Um, you have the ribbon, which just like everything else in Office, you know, depending on the context of what you're actually in, you'll be presented with different options. You have the fields pane. So as you add data sets here, you'll be able to browse that data set and look at the fields that have been included. You have the visualizations. So these are all the charts and tables and filters and all the other fun stuff you know, that you can add to a particular Power BI report. And then below here is how you configure the visualizations and then how do you format that particular visualization. And then over here on the left-hand side, we have three different areas. So the first area is the report itself. So that's what we're looking at here. As we load data into our report, this allows you to look at the raw data. And then the relationships. So what's the linkages between those? So one of the nice things with Power BI is as I go into here, I'm going to go to get data. And what I'm actually going to do here is I can get data from pretty much anywhere. Um, so as I go into here, you can see you can load Excel, Power BI data sets, SQL analysis services, the web, OData. If I click on more here, similar to the rest of the Power Platform, you can see they have a lot of you know, pre-built in connectors that you can then leverage. So pretty much anything, you want to pull data from Facebook, MailChimp, uh, you know, QuickBooks, pretty much you name it, Twilio, um, you know, Salesforce, all these kind of things are in here that you can then pull data from. Now, in particular, what I'm going to do is I have a um, environment for Project Online that has a bunch of sample data. So I'm actually going to use OData as a connection to pull data in from Project Online. So if I go back to here, I'm going to go down to other, and then you see the OData feed. And I'm going to go to connect to it. And here it's going to ask me for the URL to the Project Online data feed. It's like any good cooking show. I already have that here. So let me just paste that into here. So this is the URL to connect to my uh, sample Project Online site. And when I say OK, it's going to make a connection. now. I was already authenticated because it's part of my Office 365 tenant. If you weren't, it would have popped up and asked you to go ahead and sign in with whatever credentials you need to access that data source. But once I'm in here, you'll get this navigator screen. And in the case of OData, it's going to show you all the different tables that you can connect to and get data from. Um, if you were to connect to a SQL database or even an Excel uh, you know, file, you would see similar, you know, what what sheets or what tables are available in that particular file or in that SQL database. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and grab the project's data feed. 
And when you select it, it'll give you a little preview. So if you want to kind of take a look at the data before you commit to loading it, you can do that. Um, I'm also going to grab, let's say, the task list, resources, and issues. I don't think I have a lot of issue data, but I'll pull that in. So again, every time I pick one of these, you'll get a little preview of you know what's the data that's been loaded so far. And then when I go into here, I can either load it or I can edit the query further. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and load it. And you'll see it's now making the connection and it's going to load that data into my data model. All right, so it should be done in a second. That's one thing to always keep in mind, as you can see, task is a longer um, table, so it has a lot more entries, but it might take a little bit longer to load. But once it's in here, over here on the fields, if I expand any of these data sets, I can now see all the fields that I can pick and start drag and dropping them and adding them to my report. Now, before we start building out an actual report, let's go look at the data. So again, when I click on one of these, I can now go in and browse that data. And if I go down to relationships, Power BI will automatically detect the relationships. Um, so you can see here it linked by project ID the issues list, the projects list, and the task list. And um, notice resources are not linked because none of these have the resource ID. But in Project Online, if I added assignments here, it would automatically see that linkage and it would link it up to me. If I needed to, I can also drag across and make a linkage to whatever field it is that I want to link to. So that's one way to set up the relationships in your data model. Now also going back to here, if I go into my data, maybe I don't want to include all these columns. I can go into here, edit queries. And this is where we get into Power Query. So when I'm in the Power Query, there's a couple different things. One is as you apply different transformations to your data, they'll show up here as different steps. So you can go back and forth and either remove steps or or change steps. Um, but the other thing you can do too is um, you can go in, for example, I don't want all this data, right? So I'm gonna go to choose columns. And maybe I just want project ID, uh, enterprise type. Let's grab the finish date, project name, project owner name, percent complete. Uh, let's do start date. And then let's also grab, you know, location, phase, portfolio, program, benefits and cost. All right. So this is all I really need for my report. This makes it a little bit easier for you to manage that data. So now you can go into here and you see our table's a lot smaller. It's going to run a little bit quicker. Also, if I pick any of these, so for example, here, you see how it's showing date and time. If I don't want the full date and time, um, I can go in and specify exactly you know, what format do I want. So maybe I just want date. All right, and you see it can automatically change it here. So you can transform any of this data. Same thing with start date. I want to make it just a date. Um, let's say for location, oops, actually I'll do that back at the data model. What I'm going to do is make sure it knows that that's, you know, a, a regional kind of information, a place basically. So when I get done with this, I just go ahead, hit close and apply. And now it's applying those changes back to our data model. 
and I'll go back to the report. Come on. Okay. So now when I go back to the report, notice I don't have this really long list of fields. Now I just can manage the ones that I'm interested in. So let's start building a report. So as you can see, if I hover over any of these visualizations, it'll give you a little pop-up message of exactly what it is. In this case, I'm going to add a table. And I can drag it around on the screen. You know, Where do I want that table to show up? How big do I want it to be? And once I have that table, I'm going to go ahead and select it. I can then drag the fields here, and they'll start showing up in the table. So let's say I want to put in you know, the project name. Now you can see the project names are showing up. Let's say we want to put in the um, start date, the uh, finish date. Now notice here, see how it's expanding. It knows it's a date field. Um, so it's expanding it so that it's breaking out, you know, year, quarter, month, and day. In that case, I don't want to see it like this, right? But if I did want to summarize it at like the year level, quarterly level, month level, it's it's pretty easy to break it out that way. In this case, I just want to see the actual date. So I can go into here and say, instead of doing date hierarchy, just do the date. So now it's tightened it up a little bit. I probably don't want the actual day of the week in there. We can format that and change it later. Let's say I also want to add percent complete. So now you can see the percent completes. And let's just put in our total cost and total benefits. All right. So again, as I'm building this out, you can see it's adding it to our table. Um, if I did want to format any of these, I can just go ahead and click on them. You go up to modeling, um, and then you can go in and specify you know, some more settings for that. Um, what I'm going to do next is let's add a pie chart. And with the pie chart, what we're going to do here is um, let's do projects. Oops by phase. So now I have the projects broken out by how many are in each particular phase. Again, it's getting that from Project Online currently. And maybe I don't want the pie chart to be this big. I could just change it. And maybe I want it to show up you know, over here instead. So again, just drag and drop, move things around however you want to format them. And let's do another one. Let's add a uh, column chart. Let's add, um, say, total cost and total benefits. If I want to rearrange these, maybe I want benefits first. I can just drag it up, switch them around. And then now let's look at it by, say, portfolio. So now it's breaking out our cost and benefits by the different portfolios that the projects are in. So again, I don't want to take up that much space. You know, maybe I move this down. I can do it like that. And last one we're going to add here is a map. So you do have all kinds of visualizations, but this one's going to be a map. So with this, I can go in. You'll see it has a location field. So I do have a location in my database. So now it goes in and starts building out the map. And then maybe for the legend, I want to show, uh, we'll do portfolio. Nothing too fancy. But basically, each one of these projects is based in a particular location. So now if I drill down into here, you'll see the little indicators to show 
there's you know projects happening in Moscow or there's projects happening in London. And I could put financial information in here too and have that represented. But as you can see, I can you know zoom in to whatever level I want for my particular report to show that data. Now, if you want to format any of these, there is this little paintbrush. So if I click on format. For example, maybe I don't want to see the legend on the map, or maybe if I go down to map controls, map styles, maybe we don't want it to be a road map. We just want it to be maybe a lighter basic map, dark road. And by the way, it, it really is full blown mapping. So as I drill down into it, you start to see the highways, you know, roads, all that fun stuff. So again, it's using the Bing mapping service. All right, when you're done setting this up, at that point, you can go ahead and save it. So if I do a save as, so if I go into here, I'll say, you know, Power BI demo, And that saves it as a, a what they call a PBIX file. Um, you can email that to somebody else as long as they have permissions to refresh your data set. Um, the data that we've downloaded so far would be retained in that file, but if they want to refresh that data, they can they can open this and then authenticate. Um, there is a refresh button here if you need to pull down the latest iteration of the data. Now, if I want to share it in the cloud so that everybody else has access to it. In a case like that, I want to go into here. Let me make sure I'm signed into the right environment. Of course, I'm not. Give me one second. I'm glad I checked. OK. So now if I go here and I publish it, any workspace that you have access to um, or that you're a member of, you'll see show up here. Um, so again, if it's, <clears throat> for example, if I wanted to share it with the rest of the sales team, I could pick the sales workspace. If I want to do finance, if I just want it for my own personal use, <clears throat> I can just go ahead and click on my workspace. Now, if I, if I do put it in my workspace, I can still share it with individuals. Um, but when it's in my own workspace, I basically have full control over it. So now if I click on the link here, So now you can see in the web browser, there's the report that I just built. And if I expand here, you can see our dashboards, what reports are in this particular workspace, and what are our data sets that are currently in that workspace. All right. So there's a couple of things you know we can also do here. If I want to share it. I can go ahead and click on share and I can put in the email address of other individuals I want to share access to. Um, you can also, if I edit this report here, if I want to go in and make any modifications, notice similar to what you just saw on Power BI desktop, I can go in, drag and drop, change my fields, change my data set. I have that full capability here as well. If I want to make any of these um, visualizations show up on a particular dashboard, I can also go into here. If you click on the pin, it'll pop up and say, all right, you want to pin this to a dashboard. Which dashboard? So if I have any dashboards that I already have access to, I can just select it here. Or I can say a new dashboard. I can say it's going to be the Power BI webcast. Pin it. Now, as I'm pinning these, 
note, it will pop up here and say, hey, do you want to create a phone view? So one of the things I really like about um, Power BI is you can build these dashboards for a laptop or, you know, a desktop, you know, point of view. But Microsoft also has mobile Power BI apps that you can download, you know, on your iOS device or your Android device. And when you log into that, into your Office 365 tenant, any workspaces that you have access to, you'll be able to look at those dashboards on your phone. So when you go into here, <clears throat> let me minimize some of this. Let me go to the dashboard I just created. So when you go into here, excuse me, <clears throat> and you have different items pinned to here, um, you can, and I'm just doing this to simulate, but if you were on your mobile device, you can see exactly what that's going to look like on the mobile device. So as I pin additional reports to the dashboard, they'll show up here. And what's nice about this is it's reformatting for that particular form factor. Um, so again, it's, it's a pretty nice way to take a look at all this. Now, <clears throat> what about the content packs, right? So what I just showed you is let's create something from scratch using Power BI Desktop or the web browser. You don't always have to do that um, because Microsoft's done a really good job with the content packs to give you a leg up, give you something that you know has already been built, and then you can modify or, or change depending on what you want to do. And to get to those, if I go into my workspace, the Power BI service, I click on apps. It'll show you whatever apps you currently have loaded, but if I click on get apps, You'll see two tabs here. One will be my organization. So if your organization created a content pack, they can share it out just you know to the other individuals within the organization. If you go to apps here, this is up in the app source and you can see all the different content packs that are available. So for example, there's one for Project Online, Jira, Google Analytics, Sales Analytics, and Again, similar to with the connectors as you scroll through here, you know, ServiceNow incidents, there's all kinds of different content packs that are out there. So one of the great things about this is if you are using a particular tool, even if it's a non-Microsoft tool, you can go into here, search it. For example, if I'm looking for Twilio, bang, there it is. I can go ahead and click on get it now and it'll load it into one of my workspaces. Once it's loaded into my workspaces, I can then go ahead and start editing, you know, exactly either what's being queried or the look out, the, the look and feel of the particular reports. So again, this is a really nice capability of Power BI. So that pretty much concludes the demo part of this. So let me go back to my slide deck and I'm gonna skip through. As I mentioned, when we send out the slide deck, Everything that I just covered, oops, let's go back, is in the slide deck. Um, plus, you will have the recording for this also. So let's flip to questions. What do we have, Mike? OK, I'm looking in the chat feature now. I'm not seeing any questions at the moment. I'm seeing a couple, so it's like they sent it to okay. me directly. So oh, did they? Okay. So John wants to be made presenter. So uh, <laughs> no, John. Um, I guess he wanted to take over my demo. So Curdy, what's the best way to do source control once it's in a shared space where others can modify control also? So you can set permissions on, you know, whether someone can just, you know, basically read or view the dashboard um, and then who can edit it. Um, of course, you know, if you what I personally do is sometimes I'll retain the uh, PBIX file in a more you know se secure you know, source control location um, so that if it does get modified, I can always 
um, you know, resort to that and republish it if I have to, if I have to go back. Um, but yeah, you do have permissions on these, so you can lock down exactly who can, who can edit it or even reshare it, things like that. So John said, can the credentials of the user viewing the data be dynamically included in the filter? Yes. Um, so you can, you can um, get like the user ID and whatnot so that you can then apply filtering to it, you know, dynamically. Um, I'm not going to be able to demo that right now, but, but that is definitely a capability um, so that they're always seeing the data that's relevant to them. And that was it. Okay, great. So we do have uh, my contact info and Mike's as well. So if you guys do have any other questions, feel free to email us. Um, we do have workshops around Power BI. So if you have a particular need, whether it's either just to get started with it and you know we can help both educate you and help you build out your first report, um, that's kind of what the three-day workshop's a little bit more geared towards. But if it's a more complex dashboard or, or a process, um, we also have five-day and 10-day workshops that you can leverage. Um, and again, the way our workshops would work is we spend a couple of days getting you and your team up to speed on the capabilities of Power BI and the rest of the Power Platform. And then we dive deeper into the actual requirements and what the approach should be and how to build it out. Um, we do limit the scope of this. Obviously, it's they're limited time engagement. So depending on the report that you're interested in, you know, we may come back and make other recommendations for you. Um, maybe, you know, a shorter workshop or a longer workshop or some other type of approach. And of course, you know, we do offer support. Um, so we do offer support on SharePoint, the entire Power Platform, including Power BI. Um, and basically the idea with the support plans is you will be able to call our support desk and depending on what it is that you're trying to do, well, maybe you're having an issue, maybe you have a question, maybe you need help building something, maybe you want us to build something, um, you can use your support time in any of those fashions. Um, you basically would log a ticket through the support desk and then depending on what you're asking for, after we triage it, you'll talk to an architect, a developer, a report writer, a solution specialist. Um, so it's a great way for a lot of our customers to um, leverage our knowledge base to then help you guys realize what you're trying to build. So I'll hand it back to you, Mike. All right, thank you, Neil. All right, thank you everybody for attending. Um, again, any additional questions, reach out to me or Neil directly, uh, Mike at marquee360.com or Neil at marquee360.com. Um, if you would like a personalized demo of any of this, reach out to us and we will set up a no obligations demonstration of the solution. Thank you everybody for attending.